kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video here on the Water Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the Woj FL. That is right, we are back and we are almost finished with year number one. If I remember correctly, we've got maybe three episodes remaining including this one, so we're almost done with season one which means we can get to the season one off season which also means we can get to the season one draft which i know you guys are super excited about because you have given me your prospects for the season one draft now all of the prospects have been added into the class the cutoff has been reached a, a couple episodes ago like i mentioned so if you do want to add a prospects uh to, a, to the draft, you can still leave them down below in the comments. I will just uh, take write them down and save them for the year two draft. So the cutoff for year number one is over, but you can still leave a prospect if you want for, uh, for the year two draft. Now, if you do want to leave a prospect and you're unfamiliar with how to do it, with, the, with what I would need, just the name of the prospect, the college you want the prospect to go to, the obviously the height, the weight, and the position you want them to play, and then maybe a little bit of a description on how you want them to maybe look, or how you want them, what style of play you want them to be. Do you want them to be a, a red zone threat tight end, or do you want them to be a gunslinging quarterback, or do you want them to be a ball hawking safety? Like, what kind of description of a player do you want so I can make them as accurately as I can for you guys to see on the field? So... If you want to leave a prospect, you can, feel free. We can get that done for season number two. But season one has been officially locked up. The draft prospects are ready. They're getting their, they're finishing their college football seasons, and they are getting ready for the combine and all kinds of good stuff like that. So I hope you guys are excited for that. I know I am, because there's a lot of talented prospects in this year's NFL draft. But today, we can't look that far in the future. Today is the day we have our probably our biggest challenge and certainly our biggest challenge since we brought in our new starting quarterback Bradson Darn we take on Louisville in today's episode they are one of the best teams in the Woj FL and they have one of the best if not the best quarterback in the Woj FL in Penn Brady so we've got ourselves quite the challenge in episode or in game number one of today's double header it's gonna be pretty intense it's gonna be pretty crazy if you're going to enjoy hit that like button subscribe to the channel join the juice club and let's get started and as always we will take a look at the my franchise tool once the week is over so we can recap what happened around the league in an easier more compact way so here we are it is week 13 we've only got obviously 13 14 15 16 17 and then 18 so not that many games left. Only about six games remain in the first season of the Woj FL. And as you can see by the standings, we really need the Golden Eagles to slip up here down the stretch. We also need the Oilers to slip up. But we just played the Oilers last episode. We did beat them. So that's why we are ahead of them at 8-3. and three. We have played the Golden Eagles twice already. So that might be considered a little bit of a bad thing that we played them so early in the season that we can't now that it's going to be a tight race down the stretch we can't obviously have that final deciding game at the end of the season to determine who's going to win the division it's going to have to be up to what we do separately on the field not necessarily against each other we did split that season series 1-1 so it could go either way it could really really go either way with this golden eagles wizards matchup in the the afc south for the division lead and obviously, I'm not not even talking about the Oilers. They could they're right there with us. They're tied with eight and three record. They could easily jump both of us and win the division. Like they're not out of it now. The Orbits obviously are out of it. We beat them 24 to seven in the last in the second game of last episode. They're out of it. They're done. They're three and eight. They're looking for the future. They're looking for probably their quarterback, I would guess. And there are a lot of quarterbacks in this class. I'm very excited about the end of this season because I do think that our main man here. Not the depth chart, but Bratson Darn, I do think, is going to be the savior of this franchise. It's so much nicer 
to have a quarterback that can actually hit his throws in a consistent way. Now, obviously, he's not perfect. I've had my complaints with Bradson Darn over the past couple episodes since we made that trade for him a couple episodes ago. But just having these accuracies just makes it so much better. It just it just makes it so much better. Like the guys that we were rocking with with uh, Smooth Jazz and and Xander Young and and obviously Isaiah Cannon, who we we traded for Bradson Darn. They just they weren't getting the job done as efficiently as efficiently as I needed them, and it was in turn causing our offense to be pretty bad. So I like the fact that Bradson Darn can actually get the job done. But I do notice, has he had Escape Artist as his ability the whole time? I don't remember having Escape Artist. Maybe I did put Escape Artist on him? I don't remember. He does have 96 speed, so it makes sense for me to put Escape Artist on him. Or at least I can see my, my reasoning why I put it on him. But I feel like I'm going to change it up. I'm going to give him... I kind of want to give him Gambit, formerly known as Gambler, before all these <laughs> gambling... Uh, suspensions came out in real life and the nfl had a, they had madden had to change it to gambit instead of gambler but this one you can't throw interceptions when you're in the zone to ai defenders which we all know from my past history with this game uh and with all madden games i do throw a lot of picks now i haven't thrown that many with bradson darn since getting him but gambit feels the most safe running gun would be good as well obviously bazooka <laughs> bazooka bazooka is great uh, Pro reads would be fine. Freight train and brick wall are, are just not what a quarterback needs. At least not this type of quarterback. Maybe if you got Cam Newton or something. Uh, but that's why they have Truss, I guess. It's probably going to be either running gun. It's probably going to be running gun or pro reads or gambit. Those are probably the three that I'm going to go with. What should I do? Should I? I'm going to give him gambit for right now. He's got Gutsy Scrambler, he's got Quick Draw, he's got No Look Dead Eye, he's got Tight Out. He can't unlock any of the real good ones just yet. He needs to be a 90 overall at different uh, archetypes to get the real good ones. Like, obviously, I want Pocket Dead Eye, I want Fearless, I want probably not Roaming Dead Eye, but I certainly want Protected, Hot Route Master. I want all these good ones, but we gotta be 90 overall at certain positions or certain archetypes, which right now he is close to at a couple of them he's close to a 90 overall at scrambler and improviser but field general and strong arm gonna take him a little bit longer to get to but that's okay we can still get some good ones i'm gonna give him gambit for right now so that i if he gets in the zone i can't throw interceptions which i i do feel more confident with obviously you have two incomplete passes before it goes away but i still feel pretty confident with having gambit on there and then the defense just amazing the defense Brick Law's been pretty decent. He's missed a few tackles, but he's been pretty decent. Smoke Morrison's been pretty good. The defensive line's kind of been underwhelming, except for this man right here, Jadeveon Carter. Him and Jabari Sims have been like a, a lethal duo. The combination they've put together with the pass rush getting to the quarterback. They've been unbelievably good. Storm McKinley's been pretty good. Howard Woodson's been underrated. He's gotten a few interceptions that I wouldn't think he, he'd be able to get, but he's got a couple of them. And then special teams, I need to... Yeah, here we go. I, I finally remembered to put Flash Wilson back at kick return and punt return. Actually, I could probably keep Tyreek Lawson at punt return. It doesn't really matter. But I, I definitely want uh, Flash Wilson back there. The last time I had... Ooh, can I... Does he not have any of it? He's got his superstar abilities, I think. Yeah, he's got his superstar abilities activated. Okay, perfect. So, I keep forgetting to put Flash Wilson back at kick return. It changed when I made the, the trade for Bradson Darn. So now everything should be good, and it's time to play play Louisville here. It's going to be pretty tough. Like I said, this is one of our toughest matchups because, he, as you can see, the top threat, Penn Brady, he's got quite the stats. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league efficiency-wise and just pre pure yards. As you can see, he's second in the league in passing yards. Now, Stein, uh, Steigenberger is just dominant. He's probably going to win MVP this year. He's got 3,200 yards, 29 touchdowns, and we still have like six games to go. So he's probably going to win MVP, but Penn Brady is no slouch. He is a very, very good quarterback, and we are going to have a difficult time, I would think, on paper at least, against against this team. But we can go in. It's at home, which is a good thing, and it looks like it's a primetime matchup. Let's go in and uh, hopefully keep this winning streak going because since we've gotten Brats and Darn, we haven't lost a game. I think we're 4-0 with Bratz and Darn as starting quarterback. And next episode, in the first game of that episode, we take on Bratz and Darn's former team, the Caps, who have Isaiah Cannon as their starting quarterback. That's going to be quite the episode. You don't want to miss that one. But today, we've got Louisville, and we've got 
Oh, what team is that? Is that the... Mm, I don't know what logo that is off the top of my head. I can't think of it. I guess I could go into the standings and find out. That is the logo for... The Aviators. Okay, I wanted to say Snowhawks for some reason, but that's obviously the Snowhawks logo. As you as you guys know, the Monarchs are still un, uh, winless on the season. But we've got the... Uh, we've got Louisville, and we've got... What is the Louisville uh, name? They're the Condors. Okay, so we've got the Condors and the mm, Aviators in today's episode. Obviously, the Aviators not having that great of a season. They're 4-7, and seven, so hopefully that'll be a little bit of an easier one. But this one's going to be pretty tough. 7-4 and four versus 8-3, and three, Condors versus Wizards. Let's get it. It is game time in Orlando. Time for game number one of the doubleheader. Flash Wilson finally returns to kick return duties after having some time off, and he gets obliterated at the 17-yard line. Good start. Good start. But there he comes, Bradson Darn, our new number one. And I'm hoping he can get the job done here. I will say that these Condor uniforms do look kind of nice. It's a battle of purple, obviously different shades of purple. Ours is more of like a, not a midnight blue type of purple, but still purple. But theirs is like real, like when you think of purple, you think of the Condor's type of purple. But still, ours is pretty good too. But I do like their helmets. Their helmets look pretty freaking awesome, if I have to say so. And that's a risky throw and Yarborough pays the price. I was trying to get a little crazy here at the beginning of the game. Probably shouldn't do that. I know my history with, with craziness. It's not good, so I shouldn't be making throws like that. But I still like to. I'm going to check this down. It's MVP. He's got a first down and more. Marquez Vontel Porter with a big time catch on third down. We needed that. And I don't know if it's going to be easy to run or not. The first run of the day was not successful. So Speed McCree might be grinding out these yards. Although that was a little bit better. That opened up in the middle there. He did have a pretty good episode um, last episode. I think both games he got over 100 yards, and he was pretty impactful. And this one, he gets to the edge. He breaks one tackle. Speed McCree. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe that first run was not going to be indicative of what this game is going to be in terms of running the football. That was a pretty nice one. Good blocks all around. Got to the edge. And you know when Speed gets to the edge, he is pretty deadly. Pretty darn deadly. And I think I got a man open. That should be a throw that I can hit. And Tyreek Lawson dropped the football. He cooked his man but he could not hold on. That's honestly more impressive from the corner to have that recovery speed to get to Tyreek Lawson and force that ball incomplete. Because that was a pretty much on target throw. I got to set my feet here, fire it in. It's risky, but Lawson brings it in. So we find Lawson eventually. And now I don't want to go with the toss. Toss plays in Madden just don't really work for me. I don't really like the toss plays. I feel like they get... If they get any yards, it's like a two-yard gain at the best. And Speed gets shut down in the middle, but he's able to fight forward for about three. I'll take that. Sometimes you just have to take what you can get sometimes in this. Edison Yarbrough, if that corner is the only guy guarding him, he might have himself a money type of touchdown, but it's incomplete. Inaccurate from Bradson Darn. That was a touchdown right there. That was a touchdown. Could not get it done though kind of unfortunate what do i have to do to get his activated consecutive passes for five plus yards okay good to know underneath that's yarborough he he got paid he got destroyed in the the first attempt but that time he actually completes it and has some decent yardage there we'll go with uh with speed mccree here and he's gonna get shut down for a loss i think right yeah i think he lost the yard on that one well that's not good they were fully prepared for the run on that. I thought maybe I could trick them with a little bit of hesitation. But that was not the case. Uh, I'm going to step up and run here with... Oh, nope, I'm not. Bradson Darn got brought down by Homez. Homez? Some, something. <laughs> he got brought... There was a lot of room there. I probably should have been able to get that for a touchdown. Or not for a touchdown, but for a decent gain. Can I fire that into Parker Peters? I can't. Incomplete pass from Bradson Darn. Man, I was just hyping him up earlier about how he... I hate taking a field goal here, but we gotta get points. Especially against a team like the, the Condors. They're pretty good. Gotta get points when we can. But Bradson Darn, I was hyping him up earlier about how he's pretty accurate, more more so than he's not. And he came out here and had some not great throws just on that first drive. He's, but he's just getting warmed up. He had a week off. 
well, not had a week off, but he uh, he had, hadn't had a game since last week, so he's got to get that arm back. I know he was throwing in practice, but nothing like actual live game snaps. So he just got to get warmed up. First drive of the game, he's fine. He'll get better, I hope. <laughs> we need him to if we're going to keep up with these boys, because I have a feeling these boys are going to cook me. You know how I get cooked. It's, it's very often that it happens. So we'll see what happens here. They're going to do some run plays here, but we are the best run defense in the Woj FL. So we'll see what they can do. Probably not a whole lot, at least I hope. I really need Jabari Sims and Jadeveon Carter to get some pressure like they have been. Because I think one of them leads the league in, in sacks, right? It's Oh, that's a late hit. That's a personal foul. Um... Is it Genevieve and Carter or is it Jabari Sims? I think it's Genevieve and Carter who leads the, the Woj FL in sacks. With like 11 and a half or 12 and a half, something like that. I'm pretty sure it's Devion. I could be wrong. And that's going to be caught. What? I thought I knocked that incomplete. Oh, that's annoying. I thought I got my hand in there and, and swatted that incomplete. Or got to him in time for it to pop out. But I guess I didn't. He catches that for a big first down. Come on, Carter. Get to the quarterback. There we go. He forces him away. Penn Brady just gets out of the way. I hate trying to sack the quarterback on Madden. I'm just so bad at it. I always miss for some strange reason. Carter was right there, and I just missed it. Ah, oh, that's annoying. All right. Well, we go again. That's another quick throw, and that's a big hit. A big hit forces it, and it's Prince. Prince the safety with a huge hit to force that incomplete pass because that was going to be another first down if he didn't if he uh, didn't break that up. Carter getting struggling to get out of the blocks there from the right guard and it's another first down for the Condors. He finds the tight end Wembley. We do get diced up in the pass game, don't we? We can stop the run pretty efficiently, but we do get diced up in the run game. Oh, that's an easy throw. No, it's not. How is it wouldn't let me turn into Smoke Morrison. I wanted to pick that off. But maybe it didn't register that Smoke Morrison had a chance at the ball or I don't know. I was pressing the the button to turn into him, but it would not let me. It turned me into the guy that was behind the receiver. I don't know if I would have been able to make the interception there, but I wanted to try at least. Get the tackle. Good job. Did he hold on? He did hold on. He's at the 4. And that's the end of the first quarter. The Condors are at the door. They are at the doorstep knocking, trying to get a touchdown here. And they want us to go with a goal line blitz. Okay. I'll bring a linebacker blitz as well. Try to get Brick Law in the middle here. And we can't do it, but they hand it to the fullback and he gets stuffed. You don't really see a lot of AI teams use the fullback. I like it. I respect it, but like I said, we do a pretty good job of stopping the run. That's probably the strong suit of this defense, and that's why... We are the number one defense, statistically, in the Woj FL. And that's a beautiful slant. Easy touchdown. T. Malcolm wide open. I think he's the other X factor that they have on their offense. On their offense, uh, a wide receiver core, at least. That was a beautiful slant. Nobody was even guarding him, even though I, I had man coverage. Like, cover, cover man. So, they should have been one-on-one -on -one with him. Maybe he just got destroyed. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't really watching him. I just saw him get open. And the Condors have taken the lead 7-3. to three. It's okay, we're a late game team. And this is why we brought Flash Wilson back. He's finally returned from his hiatus as the kick returner. And this is why we brought him back. Flash Wilson is that explosive. A kick return touchdown for the Wizards. Oh, you love to see it, Flash. You love to see it. All he needs is one little gap, and he's going to take it all the way. He's just that explosive. And he's hop-skipping his way into the end zone for a tutty. Flash Wilson has returned. Welcome back to the kick returns, Mr. Wilson. And now all Harry Dicker has to do is put this one through the uprights, and he does. And just like that, we're back in the lead 10-7. to, 10 to 7. Offense didn't even need to come out on the field, which... To be honest, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> it's probably a good thing that the offense didn't come back out. Maybe if we can just keep all of our points to special teams, I'll take it. I do want to keep an eye on the bottom ticker to see if the Monarchs can ever win a game. Because I'm, I'm very invested in their their losing streak right now. They are currently winless, 0-11 on the season. 
I'm very curious to see if they'll ever get a win or if we'll have our first ever winless team in the Woj FL. Which maybe that doesn't look too good on the Woj FL brand that we had a, in, in season one, we had a winless team. Or maybe that makes you say that, oh, the talent in the Woj FL is just so good that, oh, they didn't. I just saw they lost to the Tigers. So they're still, oh, they're still winless at 0-12. Man, it, hey, you hate to be a London Monarch fan here in Season 1. It's got to be tough as Trey Watts forces Penn Brady to throw that away to stave off the sack. I just want to keep going in man coverage because I feel like man coverage is what we thrive in, even though we, we get diced up either way, I feel. But I just think that uh, man coverage we do a little bit better because we do have a lot of good athletes on the edge. A lot of our corners are pretty athletic and can stay with people! Like that right there. The veteran Howard Woodson staying with the receiver and forces that incomplete. Knocks it away. So we got a lot of talent, a lot of athletes on the end. Flash Wilson also is a athletic corner, as you just saw. <laughs> oh, Jabbar, or Jadeveon Carter, but Jabbar's... Huh? What? How did Penn Brady throw that? Hold on. Replay. 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 What? How... Did Jabari Sims not come away with a sack here? There is no way. First off, I thought that Genevieve Carter was going to get it, but that running back, uh, Kendricks, I think is his name, he came up and threw a great block. But then Jabari Sims comes in with an amazing attempt, and somehow, you've got to be joking me, Madden. What is this? What is this, EA? Come on, this is a clear sack opportunity for my boy, Jabari Sims. And you're going to give me this BS? That this is an incomplete pass. He threw this. He actually threw this. Show me one quarterback that can make this throw. And don't say Patrick Mahomes, because not even Patrick the God could make this throw. Are you serious right now? I'm wearing him like a... He's wearing me like a jacket. And he still somehow throws this football away. This is the most unserious play in, in Woj FL history. How did how did this not end up in a sack? If you screenshot this and put this on Reddit and say, what happens at the end of this play? And it's like a multiple choice. Everyone's going to pick sack. How does this not end up being a sack? That is the craziest thing ever, the fact that he throws that football. How does it even work? How does it even work? He gets it. And he launches it right there like he's actually throwing it. That's unbelievable, the fact that he, he got that away. I mean, it results in a punt anyway, but I would have liked Jabari Sims to get credit for the sack there. But that's unbelievable. If that would have been completed, oh, I would have been flipping. Yep. That would have been insanity if he would have completed that catch. But luckily, it just goes out of bounds. And we can focus back on the offense. We got the lead thanks to Flash Wilson. So now we just got to go out there and actually score a touchdown this time. I'm going to need Brats and Darn to be a little bit more accurate this time around. But Speed McCree, maybe I won't need him to be. Because Speed McCree's got the edge and he's got 45 yards on six carries. He is, I think, right, he's in the top 10 for yards on the ground. I'm pretty sure. If not, he's very close and he's breaking tackles now? Who does he think he is? He think he's Tank Barber? Speed McCree out here breaking all kinds of tackles. But now they're probably going to be ready for the the run so i'm gonna switch it up a little pass but not play action i'm probably gonna go underneath the yarborough here you guys know he's my favorite target but instead i'm gonna parker peters and parker peters finds the big catch for a first down good throw Ooh, a little re-option i haven't run a lot of read option with brats and darn it might work this time that maybe that's why it's gonna work because they weren't ready for it and bradson gets to the outside he also got the first down i thought they'd give me inches there but bradson darn that's a good choice keeping that ball they committed all the way to speed because I hadn't run the, the read option with Bradson yet. They weren't they weren't ready for it. And we cut this outside. No! Maybe I should have used the actual hard cut button. Oh, I feel like I could have had a huge play. Maybe even a touchdown on that one. If I would have got the edge. Oh, that's kind of upsetting. I thought I might have had that there. Uh, can I throw this here? I can. And he's dropped it. Mm, Yarborough. That probably wasn't the smartest person to throw to there probably was a better option but i was still hoping he'd hold on to that oh we have full momentum as well 
Oh, Parker Peters. Please, Parker Peters. It is! It's caught and he falls into the end zone! Touchdown, Wizards! I thought he was going to get tagged before he rolled into the end zone, but he... First off, I thought I was going to get picked off. Because that's how Madden works sometimes. If you throw those kind of balls, the corner can jump up and get it. That's happened to me before. But luckily, the ball gets over the head of the corner, and it goes to Parker Peters, and he just falls right into the end zone untouched for a big-time touchdown from Bradson Darn, and that puts us up by 10. Man, having a, a quarterback that's a high overall or a decently high overall in the high 80s makes so much of a difference than having the guys that we had in the low 80s or even the 70s, <laughs> like the guys we were rocking earlier in the season. Bradson Darn, he could be the guy. He could certainly be the guy. And here comes Penn Brady the Magician after that crazy uh, third down throw he, he had. But they've only got 2.12 to go in the half. They do get the ball to start the second half, so they got to keep that in mind as well. They've got all their timeouts, so they don't have to worry. Plus the fourth, the fourth timeout, which is the two-minute warning. And here that comes. So now they've got two minutes, all of their timeouts. they got plenty of time. If Penn Brady makes the right decisions, they can go down the field pretty efficiently and get either in a field goal range or maybe even score, depending on what happens. Or they could turn it over. Oh, Austin Miles, I needed you to get in front of that. That was a tough play to get in front of, but I need you to get in front of it. Under two minutes to go. Genevion Carter forcing Penn Brady to run. Trey Watts is right there. Somehow he's got a wide open man. It's Kendricks. Oh, how do you lose him? How do you let him get in front of you like that? You got to stay tight on the coverage. Is it Storm McKinley that was the, the guy who got beat? I don't know, but whoever it is needs to stay tight on that coverage because we had Penn Brady running for his life. And that's another quick throw. Oh, he threw me off there like I was a child. A minute to go. They've got all their timeouts. They don't have to rush. I think his name is Jamarcus Burrow or J Jadarius. I forget what his name, his first name is. I think it's Jadarius, actually. 40 seconds in the half. They're in field goal range. I'd love a sack to push him out here. Jabari Sims getting held, and they use their first time out. I was trying to get off the lineman with Jabari Sims, but he got held on the on the collar. Nothing called there. 36 seconds. Clock stopped. Quick throw. We're right there. How does he hold on? Yarbrough drops that every day if I throw that. But they use their second timeout. We got to make them use all their timeouts before they kick the field goal because we could be in a good spot here. If they use their their final timeout before they're in field goal range, pick that off, please. It's caught. Touchdown. <sighs> okay. It's Burrow who had the other big catch in the drive. Man, I really thought I was going to maybe not pick it off, but maybe thought I was going to force it in completion. I told you they drove down that field pretty quickly. I told you they could do it. And now we have 28 seconds in all three of our timeouts. But we may not need it if Flash Wilson does what he did on the previous kick return. So we need to have some lanes opening up. Oh, I, I screwed that up. Mm. I did that little hesitation step there, change of directions, and that slowed me down tremendously. That's on me. That's on me. But now we have, what, 26 seconds, 25 seconds to go down the field with all of our timeouts and to get at least in the field goal range. I mean, field goal range for Dicker the Kicker is like 60+. plus. So we don't have to go too far, and I'm, I'm not even going to get a chance to throw the first ball there. Didn't realize I was under pressure that quickly. That's okay, because I'm going to go verticals, not play action, just straight up verticals. Do I let Tyreek Lawson run this complete route? I think I might have to, because he cooked, but... Bradson Darn, if you don't throw an accurate ball, I'm going to start getting upset. Come on, Bradson. I was stood there with my feet planted, no running. You should have thrown an accurate ball there. I got to throw an accurate ball here. It's going to be incomplete. That time he was under pressure, so I understand it. But still, I wish that I could have an accurate ball. I got to punt this football away. I can't give them 13. If I don't get this completed, I can't give them time to kick a field goal to tie it. That'd just be stupid. So we got to have the plumber man, who we haven't seen very often in this series. We don't really punt the football too much. Good tackle right there. They have one timeout, and they've only got one play because they, they don't have a lot of time. So unless they throw a super quick play, which I don't see happening, they're going to run out of time here. Final play of the half. Yeah, he's just going to run out of time. Perfect. Okay, so we'll, unfortunately, we'll go into the half up by three, 
We probably should be up a little bit more than that, but hey, we're still leading. That's all I can ask for. We are still leading the game. That is all I can ask for. We just need to have a good second half. If we have as good of a second half as we had in the first half, math tells me we'll win the game, and I'm not that good at math. The kickoff is away. He will down it, and they will start the 25-yard line. It's Jadarius. Okay, I thought that's... Is that what I said? I don't know, but he's got 1,000 yards, so he's having a pretty good season as, I'm assuming, wide receiver one for the Condors. We need... They haven't run the football at... Well, they have run the football. They haven't gained any yards today. That's kind of crazy. I didn't realize they hadn't gained any yards on the ground. I told you, our run defense is pretty stopped. But our pass game defense is uh, is not that good. Not that good. That's probably on me. I'm, that's pro I'm probably the reason why we're not that good, but that's okay. I can live with that. As long as we come away with a Lombardi at the end of the season. Actually, since it's the Woj FL, should we name it a different trophy? <laughs> should we give the trophy a different name, I mean? Probably. Maybe the juice? No. Nah, doesn't really flow. Lombardi flows out the tongue. I don't know. We'll think about it. And if you guys have any suggestions... Carter, get to him. How are we getting cooked like this? By tight ends, nonetheless. We are just getting diced up by Penn Brady, which is not a surprise. Like I said, Penn Brady is one of the best quarterbacks in the Woj FL in terms of just stats. So, I mean, it's not a surprise we're getting diced up like this through the air, but we get diced up like this every single week through the air. And Genevion Carter almost had the sack, but Brady gets the ball away quickly. Second and four, they're in dangerous territory right now. They are on the doorstep of the red zone. And they are trying to take the lead back. Brady making some decisions at the line. Double team Carter. Get that. Stop him. No. What happened there? I don't know. And Kendrick will score the touchdown. I, I have no idea what my corner was doing or what I was doing as the corner. I don't know. Uh, but it allows for a touchdown. And that will make this a three-point game. And with the extra point, they'll go up by four. <sighs> All right, back on offense. And last time we were on offense, Bradson Darn missed some pretty stupid throws that he should have hit. Kind of annoying. Flash Wilson, mm, that wasn't a great block from that guy, but he was kind of behind him anyway, so it was, it was tough to make the block. Maybe if we get back to the run game with Speed McCree, we can uh, open some things up here because Speed was starting to get he was starting to get a little bit of work going at the end of that half or during that half. And Speed will fall forward, thankfully. We could have lost some big yards on that if he didn't fall forward. Do I run on second and eight? I don't really want to, but I'm going to anyway. Speed McCree. <sighs> I should have juked there. I don't know if I would have been able to, to make it happen, but I probably should have attempted a juke. Might have been better. Uh, MVP, please be open here. And he is. He got bumped on the route, but luckily he was able to recover. Gets the first down, keeps the drive alive. Tank Barber's coming in for a stretch. I don't really want that. Tank Barber's not really a stretch kind of guy. He's more of a ground and pound, run up the middle of the line. Juke move. Oh, speed actually got through. Maybe I should have done the juke move in the last the last run. It might have worked. No, it's too late now. Let's go with this play. Run this to the outside here. Maybe get some blocking around the edge. And we did, and Speed McCree gets the first down. 12 carries, 78 yards. Good job, Speed. And then Mesh Spot. Didn't I run a Mesh Spot earlier and had MVP get a first down? I think I did. So let's just do that again. <laughs> Why not run back a play that worked last time? Probably works again. Although I'm going to have to throw on the run. It works again. MVP gets first down and more. That's a pretty good play. That is a pretty good play. Ooh, Chicago upset uh, the Bison there by a touchdown. Bison were the underdogs in that game. Hand the ball off to McCree one more time, and he's got some room and gets to the 31-yard line. I don't want to do the, the drag wheel. The drag wheel takes too long, and it never really works. Speed. Ugh. I wasn't sure where to go there. The, the blocking didn't get to the second level. I don't think I would have got that either way. Under a minute. Should I try to adjust this to a run? Let's do go to another run. Third and two. Hand the ball off to Speed. Oh, it's Lamar Ferguson. Lamar Ferguson gets his first carry of the game, and first carry in a while. He hasn't been in the in the game in a, in a few games. But nice to see the backup running back get some touches, get some love. 
I do like Lamar Ferguson. Very, He's kind of a mix of Speed McCree and Tank Barber. He's got a little bit of burst to him, but he's also a ground and pound type of guy. Get his nose dirty and run up the field on you. Lower the shoulder pads. So he's kind of a mix of both. And he's taking us down the field here pretty efficiently. From the seven, Lamar Ferguson's got a touchdown. Lamar Ferguson came in there on like four straight runs and handled business. Thank you, Lamar Ferguson, getting us back on top with two seconds to go in the third quarter. As Dicker will make it a three-point game once again. This is back and forth. This is one of the more competitive games we've had recently. Although I say that, and I think the, the Oilers game was super, super intense as well and super competitive. By no fault of mine, I, 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 I shouldn't have had that game be as competitive as it was. We'll see what we do on this defensive drive here to start the fourth quarter. Well, I guess end the third quarter and then start the fourth quarter. Maybe I should use her Jabari Sims because Jadavion Carter has been getting double teamed by the center and right guard all day. And Jabari Sims got one-on-one -on -one matchups. So, and they finally get some rushing yards against me. It's about time. <laughs> but maybe I should be using Jabari Sims on that side that maybe allow for Jadavion Carter to not get as many double teams. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I'm going to use her Trey Watts over here. On this side, maybe take away that right tackle. Oh, no, no, they're going to switch it, so I'm going to switch over to Jabari Sims. You got a swim move, Jabari. Pick that off. Smoke! He just... He, I hate when Madden does that, man. I pressed the button to jump. I pressed Y to intercept that pass, and he just stops running and it doesn't animate. I hate when they do that, man. When I tell you to jump, you should jump. But they didn't jump. So, kind of frustrating. Should have been a pick, and it wasn't. That should be a pick. No, Brick Lodges didn't get there in time. That's understandable. Brick Lodges was outbeat by, or he was outran by Wembley. That's more so understandable than than the other interception that I didn't get with Morrison. But Penn Brady's starting to heat up. He really is. And that's picked off. It's Howard Woodson. Howard Woodson has been the hero of the defense in the past month. Howard Woodson, he jumped the route and picked it off. I got to see that because I didn't really even see what happened here. All of a sudden, Howard Woodson was in front of him. So, ah, uh, Woodson's running with 13. Who's 13? 13 is Malcolm. T. Malcolm, I think is his name, right? T. Malcolm? I don't know. But he's running with him. Brady sees that he's got inside leverage. And then Howard Woodson, watch his eyes. He's looking right at Brady. He throw. Brady throws... And he just jumps right in front. He plays receiver better than Malcolm does on that one. Howard Woodson, he's been so clutch for us this season. It's crazy how good he's been. The first turnover of the game happens in the fourth quarter. Penn Brady, and he doesn't throw a lot of picks. You saw his, his stats. He had like 20 touchdowns and three interceptions. So he don't throw a lot of interceptions. That tells you how awesome of a play that was from Howard Woodson. And Speed McCree got to the second level. Juke move broke a tackle. Big first down from Speed McCree. Do I go with a shock option? I feel like I got to stick with the run. Not only does it waste a lot of time, but it also is working for us. At least for the moment. Speed. Okay, that one didn't work. That only got us a yard. But hey, he has gone over 100 yards, so good for Speed. He doesn't have a touchdown because Lamar stole it. <laughs> Lamar Ferguson... Wiped out that touchdown. Vultured it. If we can put some more points on the board, I will feel a little bit more comfortable. I'm going to set my feet and actually throw this ball accurately. Or at least I wanted to throw that ball accurately. Maybe I need to be thrown on the run with him. Maybe he's more accurate on the run. I don't know. Because he's not accurate standing, standing in the pocket with his... Or not in the pocket, but standing with his feet set. We've tried that before. That's Yarbrough. Get that first down, Edinson. He can't get it. Fourth and two. We got to go for this. I bet that Dicker could hit this kick. Probably not, though. A little too risky, maybe. Yeah, I don't think he could hit this kick. He might be able to. Hard to tell. That's going to be Yarbrough. He gets the first down. Thank you, baby Jesus. Woo! All right. And now we ground and pound with Tank Barber. This is why we have a guy like Tank Barber on the team. This For these specific moments... He was handing the ball, and he can eat up yards. Eat up the tackles, eat up the damage, and move the football. Uh-oh, is this going to go to Hardly Knower? This might go to Walker Hardly Knower. I might change this. 
this has happened before. Okay, there we go. Now it switches to him being the running back. Can I then make it so that he we get a run play? Halfback stretch with Tank Barber. Although, at this point, I'm just going to let the clock go down to the two-minute warning. For some reason, when I do those, those no huddles, it kind of switches the fullback and running back. And unfortunately, our fullback for this play was Walker Hardly Knower. Even though I think... Oh, actually, Tank Barber is our fullback, so that makes sense why Hardly Knower was out there. But we do get to the two-minute warning. Now, I would expect them to start using timeouts because it is a three-point game at this point. So... They will use their first time out there, but that's okay, even though Speed didn't get many yards on that. Third and six. I'm going to go underneath to Yarborough, and he's going to hold on. It's fourth and two. Do we kick the field goal, or do we go for it again? I think we go for it again. It might be a little crazy, because Hart, uh, Dicker the kicker could certainly drill this. He could absolutely drill this. But I want to go with a pass play. Might be a little crazy, but I got my man, Edinson Yarbrough, my favorite target, gets open and has the first down. Mm, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. A little bit of a risky throw considering Bradson Darn's track record in this game. But we keep driving. They use all their timeouts. That's perfect. And I did just see that, ooh, they beat the Oilers, though. That's huge. Unfortunately, the, the Golden Eagles do win. But they beat the Oilers, which is good for us. Because if we hold on the last minute 40 of this game, we will go to 9-3. and three, And then the uh, we can actually just go into uh, formation here. Winning formation. So the Golden Eagles are now a 10-win team. We're now a 9-win team if, if this holds up. And then the Oilers are now still an 8-win team but with 4 losses. So that's actually huge because that creates the, the one-game gap between us us and the Oilers so that is uh, that's really huge that is really really huge unfortunately it had to come at the expense of the Golden Eagles getting another win we snap it there unfortunately Bratson Darn is going to lose some rushing yards here but that's okay because I'd rather him lose rushing yards than fumble the football and give the the Condors a chance to win this game this was pretty competitive the whole way through but that Howard Woodson interception man he has been so clutch for us. Out of everybody, I didn't think that Howard Woodson, out of the entire defense, especially the corners, I did not think that Howard Woodson would be the guy that is the most clutch. I thought maybe it'd be Storm McKinley, or maybe it would be Flash Wilson, or um, the other guy. I forget his name off the top of my head. But I, I did not think it'd be Howard Woodson. And it has been. And now, I don't even have to snap this one more time. We are going to beat the Condors in a pretty tough game against a pretty good quarterback and a quarterback that's super efficient the only turnover of the game by either team is thrown by the efficiency of Penn Brady kind of crazy and there's the W the Wizards go to a 9 win team Bradson Darn still undefeated as Wizards quarterback he didn't have the greatest game I was, I was kind of complaining a little bit there if you didn't notice I was kind of complaining about his results his, his performance but we did get the job done and in this business, a win is a win is a win is a win. So I will take it. Two big upgrades for some receivers, MVP and Parker Peters. That is nice. And we will advance the week and then go to the My Franchise tool to wrap up Season 3, or recap Season 3 and see what happened. Ooh, the the uh, Aviators, not the Aviators, are they the Aviators? Yeah, the Aviators. Uh, they won their game, so they're 5-7. and seven. And they've got a 99 X-Factor defensive lineman. Well, that's kind of scary. <laughs> that's kind of scary. But let's go to the franchise tool and recap what happened the rest of week number 13 in the Woj FL. Okay, so the week 13 results are in. The San Diego Voyagers are 11 and 1 now in the AFC. The Portland, the Portland. Why did I say the Portland? The Portland Pioneers are the first team. In the Woj FL's history to clinch a playoff spot. They are guaranteed no matter what happens the rest of the year to be a part of the first ever playoffs at 11 and 1. Now, will they be the one seed? That's still left to be determined because you got the Tigers who are really the only threat. But I, I think the Portland Pioneers are pretty much a, a, a lock for the number one seed in the NFC side of things. But on the AFC side of things, it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit more competitive. You got the Voyagers at 11-1, the Shamrocks at 10-2, the Golden Eagles at 10-2, and, and then the Desperados at 10-2, us at 9-3. There's a lot of competitive teams out there in 
the AFC side of things. Unfortunately, if things stay the way they are, we're going to have to have a wild card game because the Golden Eagles are in our division, obviously, and they would win that division. I can't have that happen, though. <laughs> we got to hope they lose. Got to hope they lose. They play the, the Condors in Week 14. I hope they lose. We need the Condors to win. Our uh, over-under is 43 against the Aviators, and the spread is plus 2.5. Okay. Interesting. The rankings, Voyagers are the number one team in the power rankings in the Woj FL. We have jumped up to number 11. Like to see that. The offensive power rankings, I'm assuming, yep, we're still 32nd. Understandable. And then we're still number one as the defensive power rankings. I'm loving to see all that. Everything's looking pretty similar. Week 13, Pioneers defeated the Dreadnoughts on Thursday Night Football 24-3. The Lumberjacks beat the Antlers 36-10. Desperados crush the Sentinels 41-20. Steamers fall to the Black Knights 24-14. Golden Eagles, unfortunately, beat the Oilers 31-14. It's good and bad. Blues beat the Snowhawks 35-21. Elks defeat the Armadillos 35-21. Tigers keep the, undef or the winless streak going for the Monarchs 38-10. Kind of crazy that they're still winless. Voyagers... Locked up the one seed, or not locked up the a playoff spot with this victory, 28-14 over the Orbits, who we've beaten recently. The Mounties lose to the Thunderbirds, 35-14. Aviators defeat the Redwoods, 26-21. And on Sunday Night Football, the Nighthawks defeat the Bison, 28-21. And obviously, we were the Monday Night Football game, 24-21 over the Condors. So that is your Week 13 stats. Our Week 13 season. Penn Brady still second in the Woj FL in passing yards. I really do think that Steigenberger is going to take it. He's got 32 touchdowns to just four interceptions. That is kind of crazy. He's been super efficient. He plays for the Tigers, right? Yeah, he plays for the Memphis Tigers. I don't think we play them this season, but I could be wrong. We could certainly play them. I hope we don't. <laughs> Herschel Gates still leads the, the league in rushing yards. I think that, yeah, Speed climbed the rankings. He was like down here in 15-16, I think, last time. But now he's up to 12. He's got 915 yards and 9 touchdowns. A few of them have been, obviously, uh, vultured by a few other backup running backs. Receiving, Ja'Cory Crispy still leads the league in receiving yards. There's Jadarius Burrow. He's uh, the guy that we just played. He's got 1,000 yards. He's had a pretty good season. Ooh, Robert Richard has been dethroned. He was the league leader in tackles for the entire season. Until now, Denzel Yost from the Orbits. Oh, we played against him. I don't remember saying his name at all, but he now leads the Woj FL in tackles with 110. And then you got Jamin Majors from the Tigers. The Tigers seem to be a pretty good team. What's their record? What are the Tigers' record? They're 10-3. and three. Okay, makes sense. They are 10-3. and three. But Robert Richhood, who plays for the Tokyo Dragons, has been dethroned. He was the tackle leader for the entire season. Sack leader, it is Genevion Carter. He's got 12.5. Still leads. 11.5 well, for Ed Baldwin, though. Trey Watts is right up there as well. Interception leader is Marcus Samuels. Howard Woods, I was going to say, he's got to be up here soon. And he's right there with four interceptions. Smoke Morrison also has four. He's right there with him. I didn't realize Smoke Morrison had four. And then obviously uh, kicking and then returns. If we go to kick returns, Flash Wilson should be at the top, I think, right? Or maybe he doesn't have the most yards, but he's got the most touchdowns now, I think. If I can find Flash Wilson number... There he is. He's 38. He doesn't have that many rush... Or er, receive... No, what? He didn't have that many return yards. Why is he all the way down here? What's the um, rankings for this? I don't know, because it's all, like, Ray Ray Killzone should not be leading, but he is. Maybe it's because, is he leading this? No. I have no idea why this is ranked the way that it is. Flash Wilson's the best kick returner in the league. He should be up here, but he's not. He should be at the top. He's not at the top. All right, so that is how the Woj FL looks through week 13 it's time to go and play week 14 against the aviators they are currently ranked or they are currently uh with a win record of what five and seven yeah five and seven right here but the biggest story of the season so far and probably down the stretch not only will we beat the uh the golden eagles for the division but it's will the london monarchs ever get a win we'll have to keep keep an eye on that and see if it happens and obviously one last look at the uh the draft class We've got some big boys up here, some good players. There are some very, very good players in this class. Keep an eye on some of those players, and we will see what happens in that offseason episode, which I still haven't decided yet if I'm going to stream it or not. I might, but I haven't fully decided yet. Let's go and take on the Aviators and see if we can keep this hot streak going with Bradson Darn, but I'm going to need him to be a little bit more accurate this time. 
Here we go. It's a chilly one here in Canton. Canton. For this game against the Aviators. And the Aviators are one of the teams that have gotten their jerseys redone. Kind of like how the Wizards have their jerseys redone for the series. Well, the Canton Aviators have their jerseys redone. And these are some of my favorite re uh, redo jerseys. They look so good. These jerseys look so good. I was going through the, the options when I was picking what jersey we were going to wear. And I saw that they had some different jerseys. And they looked unbelievably good. So I'm happy that we get to play them so we can see the jerseys. And they're starting out hot here. They've got one play. Howard Woodson talked about how he was super consistent. Probably the guy who single-handedly won us that game against the Condors. He gets cooked on the first play against the Aviators. That's not a good sign. But these aviator jerseys kind of give me that uh, military, just like Navy college football type of vibe. I love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, we're getting absolutely... I got to stop talking about their jerseys because we're getting absolutely destroyed. We are getting cooked by the aviators on two plays. They're already at the nine. <laughs> they haven't had the ball for a minute yet. And they're already at the nine yard line. Oh, that's a play at quarterback or quarterback keeper on the read option, and he's going to get the rushing touchdown. Three plays is all it took for the Canton Aviators to score a touchdown. Deshaun Hoffman. Wow. I'm a little terrified. <laughs> I'm a little bit terrified. It took them three plays to score a touchdown. They went 75 yards in a minute. Okay, uh, we, we are in a little bit of a, a game. <laughs> this is going to be quite the game here. Not what I was wanting. I mean, this is a sub-500 team. I was hoping we would perform a little bit better on defense, but they got they caught us napping, that's for sure. I was talking, I was praising their uniforms, and I wasn't really even paying attention, I guess. I was not really even paying attention. Howard Woodson got destroyed in that first play, though. All right, boys, let's get it done. Let's come out here, play some solid offense, and have actually some decent blocks. If I can get some decent blocks, I'd be happy, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get those. Although the first play against the uh, the Condors was not decent blocking either on the run. And MVP actually got the first down there. Wasn't sure if he was going to. Uh, we won't be able to find out if the Oilers lose until we go to the My Franchise Tool because they play on, uh, on prime time. So that's unfortunate. We won't know if they're still winless. You got to throw a block in there. That's a, that's a stupid way to lose a yard. I shouldn't have lost a yard there. I should have at least gained one all right i'm gonna go out of the backfield speed mccree's got a lot of room and he's got a lot of speed he broke a tackle and got a first down there you love to see it little play action cross this play usually gets really open for any receiver that's running the the b route but this time it's parker peters so parker i'm gonna need you to do the exact same thing and he does parker peters wide open and it's an actual dot from bradson darn you love to see it love to see it set my feet and he actually found an open receiver and it was accurate speed mccree it's going to be a tough day for speed i'm going to still give him the ball but it is going to be a tough day for mr mccree running the football at least that's what it kind of seems like that's the kind of vibe i'm getting right now he could have a decent route here if we send him up the field oh they're gonna adjust okay they're gonna adjust on speed I'm going to roll, and I'm going to have to fire that into Parker. He's going to hold on. Parker's got some of the best hands in the on the team. So I'm not surprised he held on to that football. He's got some of the best hands on the team. And I might go to him again. This could be a heavy Parker Peters game. And I'm going to go to him one more time here. He gets the first down. It's a big throw and a bigger catch from Parker Peters. Now what do I go with here? Maybe like a stick and nod choice. Tyreek Lawson, MVP, Yarbrough, anybody here? Uh, I'm at the roll. I'm going to take off and run. I got a lot of room. If I get a block... Oh, the, oh my God, I can't even... What? Bradson Darn with the, the user manual juke. I turn the corner like Tokyo Drift style. And I outplayed him. I'm getting a little sticky on the controller here. Bradson Darn, what was that? Like a... 10, 15 yard run, something like that. Bradson Darn gets us on the board, tying the game with the Aviators. Now I'm I'm asking my defense, please, please be better than three plays. <laughs> I'm not asking for a lot. 
I'm not asking for a lot. You should be better than three plays. But Deshaun Huffman, or Hoffman, I should say, Deshaun Hoffman, he uh, he really just destroyed us. It was like, what, two pass plays, and then he scored the touchdown on the run? So let's do a little bit better. They're going to run a lot of read option, it seems, and they are cooking us again. We're one of the best run defenses in the league, and we're getting destroyed. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed. Come on, boys. Let's play a little bit better here. Can we play a little bit better? That's another quick throw. How did he hold on to that? That's a testament to Patterson's hand strength. He's got some strong hands if he's going to hold on to that football because that was pretty tight coverage. Pretty tight coverage. They're going to hand it off to the running back again. Ooh, he's going to take a hard hit. I think his name is Javon Tyler. I think that's his name, Javon Tyler. And he's playing pretty well. And that's the end of one quarter. So one down already. It's all tied up at seven. Obviously, we had a lot more time of possession there. And the Golden Eagles just scored a touchdown to tie it up with the Condors. We're going to be rooting for the Condors. We need the Condors to win, although it doesn't really matter, I guess, if we lose this game. But I'm hoping the Condors win and we win so that we can tie with the Golden Eagles again. Get back on the same same level because we've got, I don't want to say an easy matchup next week, but not as difficult of a matchup against the Caps. Although I thought this was going to be a slightly easier matchup and they're absolutely destroying me. What the heck was that? Luckily, he got tripped up because of Madden Physics, but that uh, that shouldn't be allowed. I shouldn't. We shouldn't allow that. I'm gonna I'm gonna outlaw that in the Woj FL season two. <laughs> Come on, guys. At least we're stopping them longer than three plays. I'll take that. That's a win, I guess. But they're just going up the field with ease. This is going to be a shootout. I have a, a bad feeling this is going to be a shootout. If I can't stop them on these first two drives. Who knows what's going to happen when the game gets tight and actually everybody gets tired. Oh, that's a, that's an interception. It's Smoke Morrison, number five on the season for the number one corner on the team. Smoke Morrison steps up huge. That could have been very bad for us if we didn't get that interception there. That's a massive interception. Thank you, Smoke, for getting that. Absolutely massive. And we fire that in. That's going to be caught by Tyreek. Out of bounds. He didn't get his feet in. Tyreek, you're better than that. Oh, I know it was kind of a, not a great throw, but it was a, it was a good enough throw for you to get both feet in. You, you really should have gotten both feet in. And then I go to him again. He holds on there. That was a, that was more of a difficult throw. I'm surprised he actually held on to that. Third and five. We got to capitalize on this intercept. I pressed the button. I can't believe we actually caught that. I was not expecting us to actually hold on to that. I did not mean to actually press the button that time. I was just trying to snap the ball quickly. Uh, speed gets the first down. Thank God. I thought I got shut down. I I, asked, I was trying to like hurry up and snap the football, and I guess I pressed it too many times, and he threw it. Luckily, Yarbrough held on to the football. It's not something he does very often recently. He's dropped a lot of footballs, but they've been in tight coverage, so I can't really complain too much. I've given him I've not given him a lot of opportunities to have easy catches. And Parker Peters, I told you he's got some of the best hands in the team. Oh, please, Tyreek. Please win immediately. I think he might have. It's going to be an incomplete pass. I tried to get off the deflection. Man, he didn't win. Tyreek didn't win. I needed you to win, Tyreek. You're one of the fastest guys in the league. How do you not win that? This could be a quick throw. I might try to get it. It's intercepted. I hate Madden so much. Bennington with the pick. I hate the game of Madden, man. I hate it. I hate it so much. This is a touch, not a touchdown. This is a easy throw. He's wide open. Nobody's on and the linebacker drifts over and he just jumps out of the, the gym and catches that ball. Oh, I hate this game, man. Hate it. And now we give the ball right back. We needed to capitalize. They gave us a, a beautiful opportunity, a blessing with that interception from Smoke Morrison, and we give it right back with another interception back to them. And the running back's out running amazing routes? What's happening? Why is he out there running crazy routes like that? And I'm in zone coverage. I probably shouldn't be. Probably shouldn't be in zone coverage. Somebody get on that receiver there. Mm, that's super frustrating that he picked that off. And I'm not going to be able to pick one off, am I? I 
hate that, man. I hate that. That's a stupid interception. That linebacker should not have hops like that. <laughs> that ball was high enough where it should have got over his head. And if anything, he gets a finger on it and it goes incomplete. He should not be able to jump out the gym like that and catch that football. But that's what Madden does for you, baby. Yeah, that's a beautiful route. Woodson got destroyed on it. And it's a touchdown. Oh, we had all the momentum, bro. We had all the momentum, and the Aviators take it right back with that pick. And the worst part about it is he was nobody was over the top. It wasn't like I threw it early with a guy that was like right in front of him, and he had to he didn't win off the, the line or something. He was wide open, and the linebacker just drifts over and, and jumps thirty thousand feet in the air and picks it off. Down by a touchdown again. Flash Wilson can't get the return there. Okay, it's not your fault, Bradson. I mean, it wasn't the greatest of throws, but it was a good enough throw to get the get to the receiver. But now they've got all the momentum. We are on the road, remember. And I threw the... Ah, oh, it's a bad throw. That's on me. I hate myself. It's going to be a pick six, too. Juice, you're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot. Why did I throw that? I knew that linebacker was going to be there, and I still threw that. For some ungodly reason, I still threw that. God, I'm an idiot. I was just saying how this game screws you. And then I go and screw myself. Oh, now we're down by two touchdowns against a team we can't stop on offense. That's brutal. Brutal pick. I cannot believe I threw that. I was just forcing it to Peters for some unknown reason. I have no idea why I threw it there anyway. Mm. Okay, that's all right. We can come back. I feel more confident saying that because we have Brats and Darn. And the way our offense has played the past two episodes, if I if we still had any of our previous quarterbacks, like Smooth Jazz or anybody else like that, uh, I would not be I would not feel confident in saying that we could come back. But I do feel confident, although not maybe not really, maybe I shouldn't feel confident because our defense has been torched all game against these boys. But I do feel like we can actually make a, co a competitive game out of this. Especially if I can hit this throw. Yarbrough, what a th what a deflection. He put his hand in the beautiful spot. How he knew that ball was right there, I don't know. But he put his hand expertly to knock that incomplete. Uh, I got to step up here. But I got to juke him. Bradson Darn, slide down. Beautifully done. Call a timeout. 50 seconds. I need to think. I can't be trying to rush my, my play calling here. I'm going to go play action crossers, but I, I'm actually going to run play action here. Sometimes running play action allows for Tyreek Lawson to actually win his route. Uh, but it's not him this time. That's a bad throw! Bradson, 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 Bradson. He was wide open. You got to hit that earlier. I threw it right when he was open, but you, you drifted the ball. You can't be drifting the ball like that, big dog. Oh, that's so annoying. MVP was so open. Like, not even open. He was so open. Like this. Tyreek Lawson, turn up the field. Okay. He didn't turn up the field as quickly as I wanted him to, but he still caught it. It was a good throw. First and 10 from the 22. We absolutely have to have a touchdown here. I mean, there's no no other thing that we can have. Yarborough, just get out of bounds at the 8. Good job. That was a good throw, good route. And then maybe Arches play. I don't know. I don't really like this. I mean, maybe it's just Yarbrough underneath, and it might have to be. There's Yarbrough. Fight for the end zone. He got Judo tackled into the end zone, but it's a touchdown nonetheless. And the Wizards are somewhat back in this game, and that was a good drive. A little shaky, but a good drive. But now I need the defense to... I don't, I don't think we get the ball, though, unfortunately. Or do we? Yeah, we do get the ball, because they started with the ball, and they scored a touchdown three plays. So we do get the ball to start this or to start the second half. That's beautiful. We can get back in this game right away. We can absolutely get back in this game. Now we have to hope that they don't move the football down the field in 30 seconds. But we can get this ball back pretty quickly and score again, hopefully. That's gonna be the goal. 21 to 14 from the 25 yard line. Jovan. Did I say Jovan or maybe I said J J I don't remember what I said. I'm, I'm pretty sure I said Jovan, but I don't I don't remember. But that's his name. <laughs> Jovan Tyler. And he's been really good today really really good in the the passing game as well he's been a good route runner oh it's a screen it's a screen austin miles couldn't get there he breaks one tackle with a stiff arm good lower body tackle there 
20 seconds of the night, are you going to run a timeout? Probably not. No, they're just going to let it go. Whew. So we escape the half. Oh, they're going to run one more play. Bring him down, please. Thank you. Okay. I didn't think they were actually going to snap it. They, We get to the half, down by a touchdown. This shouldn't be the case, but unfortunately it is. So we get to the... We get to the half, down by one, touchdown, and we get the ball. We went up the field fairly easily on that previous drive when we scored our touchdown to go down by one score. So I'm hoping that can happen again, and maybe we won't have, oh, I was going to say, maybe we won't even have to go on offense, but Flash got brought down to 29. Good tack or good uh, return. Let's get moving on offense here. Let's keep doing the same stuff we just did. And we'll be in the, the end zone by no time. Speed McCree got the edge. Big carry. Five carries for 15 yards. Not as good as he usually is, but it's a stout run defense the Aviators are throwing out there. And they shut that down fairly quickly. That's the guy who got the pick six right there. Mm, let's see. This Arches play was the one we scored the touchdown on. So we might as well try it again. Although, uh-oh. Did I call the wrong play? No, no, no. Okay, I'm good. I am going to send both of my edge receivers, or my boundary receivers, deep and hope they can win. And they didn't win, so I'm just going to throw this away. I'm not going to risk anything. I could have thrown a risky pass. You know I like to do that. <laughs> well, I don't like to do it, but you know I do that often. Might as well just throw, a, throw it away and live to fight another down. You never know when that pass is going to go wild and incomplete, intercepted even. So... Yarborough on fourth and one, we're obviously going to go for this. Pretty obvious. And we're going to switch this to an inside zone run because that middle of the line looks really tasty right there. And it is. I don't know how he got off the line so fast. Or off the block so fast. Speed should have been through that hole immediately. But I don't care. It's first down. Does not matter. In the slightest. Because we got the extra yardage. Got the down. And now it's a holding call. God bless America, bro. That's the first holding of the episode, and it came in a bad time. Bad, bad time. Is it King Queen? Who is it? Although a Timmy. Can't have you hold like that, big dog. Can't have you hold like that. Usually it's King Queen who holds. Ooh, one man to beat. Speed jukes. But it slowed him down too much, I think. He gets most of the penalty yardage back. So that's good, at least. Second and 11. Now it's just like we lost one yard on the run. Parker Peters. Ah, it's a little bit behind him. He had to kind of slow down to return his body. He probably would have had the first down there if he would have just caught it on the run in stride. But that's okay because we can't get anything going there. Fourth and five. Do we go for this again or do we kick the field goal with Dicker? They want us to go for it, and I think I agree. I think I agree we go for it. Yeah, we could kick the field goal, but judging by the way their offense has been destroying us, I think it's the best play to go for this here and then fire that in. MVP, he dropped it. It's incomplete. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, maybe that wasn't the best decision to throw it to MVP, but he was the most open, I thought. And he dropped on the big hit. He had the first down, too. Another quick screen. Wide receiver screen that time. Knocked incomplete. Is that Austin Miles? Yep. Austin Miles with the disruption. The Condors are beating the Golden Eagles, by the way, by a touchdown. Now, that's, the game's not over, obviously, but that is a, a touchdown game right now in the third quarter. You can't see because my camera's coming up, but they're in the third quarter. Third and four. Did they go for the run? They might. They might go for a run here. No, it's a pass. Good thing I didn't... Oh! I was going to say, good thing I didn't blitz my linebackers, but I guess it didn't matter because Jupiter was right there for the for the first down, so... Man, do we need to stop here more than ever. We need to stop. Oh, it's a quarterback keep on the read option. I missed the tackle, and Hoffman's got a ton of room. He's super fast. Wow, Deshaun Hoffman is fast. He was moving like Lamar Jackson out there. That was crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who Lamar Jackson is. He was moving like a fast person, like Usain Bolt. That was insanity. Please throw a pick. Please throw a pick. That's not a pick. That's a catch by the running back. This guy is an elite route runner. This dude's amazing. Oh, no. Under a minute to go. 
in the, the quarter. It's a run to Tyler. He's got the first down and he fights for the touchdown. Oh my God, this might be the greatest running back I've ever seen. He can do everything. And they are once again up by two touchdowns. Oh, not getting that conversion on fourth down is probably going to be the death. It's probably going to be the nail in the coffin. The final nail in the coffin. Mm. Man. What really was the nail in the coffin was the, the pick six. That was the real nail in the coffin. And now down by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, we cannot really run the football. We have to kind of, well, we're not in the fourth quarter yet, but basically we are. We kind of have to just go down the field as efficiently as possible. I mean, we can still get speed involved because we can check down to him and, and have him be explosive with the ball in his hands because that's that's what he does. But we cannot really just hand, all, hand the ball off to him. If I can fit that in there, that's a tight throw. It's picked off. My God. That's ball game. We are going to lose to the Aviators. I didn't think that was a bad route. Was that a bad choice to throw that? I mean, he was open. This corner's got superhuman reflexes and reaction time. And he just steps in front. Maybe I should have gone aggressive. I guess that's the only thing I can th think of that would have maybe altered the chances. That's brutal. That's just brutal, man. That's ball game. That is going to end the game for us, unfortunately. But that is just so tough. The fact that we lose like this. The fact that we're going to lose like this is is super tough. Because we are, we are the better team. We are, I think, the better team. We've been playing better this entire season since we got Brats and Darn. But this team, I mean, this Aviators team is sneaky good. Like, they are not as bad as their record may say they are. But they are absolutely just unstoppable against me. And maybe that's just because I'm really, really bad. And obviously, that is true. I am really, really bad. We know this. We've been over this plenty of times. But for some reason, this, this Aviators team is just my kryptonite. Like, I don't know what to do against them. They are just... Whatever, whatever they want to do, they're doing on offense. We've been able to move the football somewhat on, on our offense, but... I mean, they're just... This running back, Joe, Jovan Tyler, is is crazy. He's like a the greatest dual threat running back I've ever seen. He's like a, a Nick Chubb, Christian McCaffrey, all put into one. He's an unbelievable running back, and their offensive line just cleared so much room. And that is the nail in the coffin. That is the final nail in the coffin. It'll be 35-14. to 14. Let's be fair. We weren't going to come back if they didn't score. If I didn't throw that pick, we weren't going to come back. Let's just be straight about that. But the fact that I did throw the pick, and then they go and put up another touchdown, just completely ices this one. <sighs> you got to be upset, man. You got to be upset. I mean, we, we should have won this game. But I guess I should have been... I should have been more on a high alert. Judging by the way they opened the game with three plays and they scored. So maybe that should have like tipped the old sensors to say that, oh, maybe these guys are for real. I don't know, but it was uh, not good from the start. And Bradson Darn didn't really have that bad of a game, but he also didn't have that good of a game. He was kind of just existing. And he's, now he's having a bad game. Now he's throwing like he usually does, or like he has been the past couple episodes. Come on, Bradson. I didn't even do anything there. I didn't lead the pass anywhere. You gotta throw those accurately. You gotta throw those accurately. Do I need to have... Is the only way I'm gonna complete passes on a consistent basis to have a 99 overall and everything? That might be the only way. That's a good run from Bradson. See, that's something that we don't usually get, is our uh, big runs like that from the quarterback. Where was that earlier in the game? Fire that in. See, like, what's that, Bradson? What's that? You have an open man. I, I got no no people in my face. Like, I didn't. I was not under pressure, and I didn't even like move the analog stick to to lead the pass away. I just like pressed the button, and it's incomplete. It's that incomplete. It's kind of crazy, actually, how incomplete that was. That should be a simple pitch and catch from receiver to tight end, and yet you missed it. 
Don't understand it quite. I did not see him. Wow. The shadowing of the end zone mixed with the, the field, like the end zone color being the same color as their jersey, I honestly did not even see him there. I thought that MVP was wide open. Or maybe it's Tyree Lawson. I don't know who it was, but I, whoever was running that route, I thought he was wide open. <laughs> I did not see that corner at Or maybe he's a linebacker. I did not see him at all. I thought that space was completely free for my receiver to run into and the, the ball to get thrown into. I was wrong. Finally, Jabari Sims gets to the backfield. We haven't had any pressure on on uh, Deshaun Hoffman. He's been completely free and clean in the pocket. He's obviously had some pretty dynamic read option plays, including the one he scored on in the first drive. And they've had, oh, Smoke Morrison pick number two of the game. Why couldn't that have happened when it was a close game? <laughs> good play, though, by Smoke. Not going to take anything away from him. That was a really good play. But it doesn't take away the fact that we're still not going to win this game. Unless Bradson Darn can score here quickly. Those uh, quarterback runs up the middle have been working right now. I like it. And I kind of want to just give this to speed. And he gets into the end zone. All right. I mean, I'm not saying it's over, but I'm saying it's over. I don't really see a way where we can come back and win this game. I mean, obviously we can't onside kick this early, so... We're just going to have to kick it away and hope that maybe maybe Deshaun Hoffman throws another pick. Because that seems to be the only way we can stop this offense. We haven't been able to force a punt. We haven't been able to do anything. The only way we can turn them over is getting the interceptions. Which, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it's helping Smoke Morrison's Defensive Player of the Year campaign. But we need to do a little bit better than that. A little bit better. We need to actually stop them, force a punt, and do some, some real damage here. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. Down, that's going to happen. And they're probably going to be super care careful now. There's the run by Tyler. That probably gets us very close to the two-minute warning, if not at it. And it does. So, two minutes to go. Down by two scores. Against a team that we have not been able to really stop. Much at all. So, I don't like our odds. But as Han Solo famously said... Never tell me the odds. Third and six. From the 29-yard line. We need a big stop here. If we can get one stop, things can change. Because we can score quickly. I believe in that. I believe we can score quickly. And then obviously it would be, be uh, onside kick time. And that's how. How is the zone. I was running the zone. How do we let that get open? I don't even want to call timeouts, man. That's just That's just so frustrating. I forced him out of the pocket with Jadavion Carter, and he somehow finds an opening in our zone. How can we not run with anybody? What are we doing? It's not even worth. It wasn't even worth calling timeouts. It was like a minute to go, so it's not worth calling timeouts. But I cannot believe that the zone opened up like that for him. It's just it's unbelievable the fact that that happened. So we will lose our first game with Bradson Darn as the starting quarterback. Man, I really thought we were going to go on a stretch there where we were just going to keep winning games. And we lose to a team that we should not have lost to. And we lost pretty bad to them, too. Man, but this team played way better. They played way better than their 5-7 and seven record or whatever they were. I feel like that was a trap game. That felt like a, a real trap game. That's a tough loss. That is a real tough loss. Hopefully next episode we can come back with games against the Caps and Armadillos, but that is a really tough loss. I'm just begging that the Oilers did not win. They did. Mm, and now we're back to the same place we started the episode. But the Caps? The Caps are 2-11. and We have to come away with a victory against the Caps in the next episode. I don't think the Armadillos are much better than that. They might be like maybe a 5-6 win team, but they're not much better than the Caps. We have to come away. And this is the team that had Brats and Darn. We traded Isaiah Cannon to. So we are going to play against Isaiah Cannon. We're going to see how good he is. I guarantee you he's going to go off for like 400 yards and three touchdowns, four touchdowns, something crazy like that because that's just how the CPU likes to screw me. But it's an unfortunate 
end to the episode in terms of gameplay let's go into the my franchise tool now to wrap up the video and wrap up week 14 see what happened around the league and most importantly see if the monarchs are still winless all right recapping what happened around the league in week 14 so the shamrocks have now clinched the first spot in the afc side of things they are 10 and 3 i'm assuming they've won their division because they're not the one seed so i'm assuming they won whatever division they're in and they're in the AFC East, it looks like. So they have won the AFC East, and they are going to the playoffs. Congratulations to them. We're still in the playoffs at, at number six, and the Golden Eagles lost. So we could have made up so much ground right there. We would have been 10 and three. They would have been 10 and three. Oh, losing that game now really hurts. It really hurts. Oh, that's so stupid. Okay, so where are we at? We are. Orlando where is Orlando at there we are so it's uh, over under is 45 and the the spread is minus 10 they think that we're gonna win by more than 10 points that's kind of crazy I don't really believe in that but hey if they want to think that I'll, I'll I'm game we're ranked 13th in the league we're still ranked oh no the orbits are worse than us now that makes me feel a little bit better <laughs> the caps are right there as well uh, and then we're still somehow the best defensive team in the league. I don't know how that's possible. Maybe because we're just getting a lot of turnovers. Week 14, though. Thursday Night Football, the Blues defeat the Sentinels pretty bad. Pretty handily. 24-6. Steamers defeat the Armadillos 23-17. We play the Armadillos next episode. And they're 3-10, and 10, so that's what I'm talking about. They're not as... So next episode, we take on a 2-win team and a 3-win team. It should be straightforward. But it's never straightforward in Madden. Huskies defeat the Lumberjacks 21-14. Uh, Condors do defeat the Golden Eagles. The Golden Eagles lose 35-28. They're 10-3. Huge. We obviously lose to the Aviators. The Antlers defeat the Elks 27-24. Orbits fall to the Black Knights 42-10. Yikes. Uh, Redwoods defeat the Caps, who we play next week, 38-17. Bulls defeat the Dragons 27-21. Mounties lose to the Pioneers 24-21. Pioneers are pretty much going to be the one seed in the NFC. That's pretty much my my guess <laughs> and then you got bison defeating the shamrocks 21 18 desperados defeat the voyagers 35 7 oh man that is a crazy game 11 and 2 versus 11 and 2 that must have been an amazing game although it was a blowout <laughs> 42 to 10 oilers over the monarchs the monarchs are winless still we've only got two episodes left in four games will the monarchs win a game this season i i hope they don't <laughs> river hogs defeat the nighthawks 31 21 and the final game sunday night football actually there was three sunday night games uh because we're getting to that point in the season where monday night football kind of falls away and we get other scheduled games and we get the final game which is thunderbirds versus the dreadnought they beat them 45 31 so that is your week 14 schedule and for uh, week 14 results Penn brady has now passed steigenberger for league lead in uh, yards but steigenberger still leads pretty heavily over touchdowns he's pretty efficient too with four interceptions rushing is still herschel gates receiving is riley austin tackles is fred foster who i think is new right because it was jim uh it was Den denzel yost and then jermaine majors and then rich hood and fred foster's now jumped up with 100 plus tackles he's from the mounties all right sack leader is still Jadeveon carter but terry and garrett have now gotten 12 so the lead is not safe interception leader is now smoke morrison officially because he had two in that game so he's got six he's now the league leader in interceptions love to see that so we're still looking pretty good pretty good pretty darn good and let's see it was the afc east right so yes so you, you can see i it was the first thing i saw and i didn't even notice it so oh look at this even with their two they're on a two game losing streak and they still clinch the division that's how bad the rest of the afc is well the AFC East does consist of the London Mon Monarchs. So the teams over across the pond have not done well except for the Shamrocks, who have are the first team to clinch the division and a playoff spot. So they are guaranteed no matter what. I'm assuming the uh, Pioneers will do the same, and they have. They've clinched the division and the, the spot in the playoffs. And I'm assuming they're also going to get the one seed because if you look at the NFC, the Tigers are really the only threat, and they're two games back. So they're probably not going to do that. But the Tigers have Steigenberger, so maybe they can. Maybe they can do it. But the Portland Pioneers, they're a pretty decent team, right? They've got Mike Stoneridge, who is their leading quarterback. They're they're pretty decent. They've got 
Uh, they averaged about 27 points a game. I mean, that's why they're winning right here is their giveaways. He's not really turning the ball over. That's probably... He's only got one interception the entire season. Wow. And they've got a running back with 1,200 yards. Stoneridge is, is really good. No 1,000-yard receiver, I wouldn't think. Maybe if Charles goes crazy the, fa the last couple of, of games, he can get it. But I don't think he's going to get 1,000 yards. But that is a pretty eventful two weeks here in the Woj FL. We've only got four games left to go. What will be the fate of some of your favorite teams here in Season 1? It's going to be crazy. You don't want to miss it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the episode. Subscribe to the channel. Join the Juice Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.